Yet another game I picked up at Essence Spiel 2016 is Cottage Garden. It's designed by Uwe Rosenberg and it's a game for 1-4 to four players. It takes about 60 minutes to play and it's for the ages 8 plus. Let's take a look at how the game is played. Place the nursery in the center of the table so everybody easily can reach it. If you're playing with four players, you will use this side of the board. If you're playing with one to three players, you will be using this side of the board. Fill each square in the nursery with a flower tile. You will choose them randomly. Now take the rest of the flower tiles and place them in a queue around the table. Take the wheelbarrow and place it in one end of the queue. This will be the starting tile when you need to fill up tiles in the, in the nursery. Take the flower pot tiles and place them inside of the wheelbarrow. Take the parasol and place it next to the board. Place the two beehives next to the board. Place the green die, the gardener, in the starting position. If you are one to two players, you will start him here. If you are three players, then he will start here. And if you are playing one to two players, his starting value will be two. Otherwise, it would be one. Place all the cat tongues next to the board. Place one flower bed next to the board and you will place it with its light side up. This side is the light one and this is the dark one, so place it with the light side up. Give each player a planting table where you have a scoring track inside here for the blue cubes and here you have for the orange cubes. At the end here we have 20 points area, it is called the target area and you really want to get your scoring cubes up here so they will be worth 20 points. Each player also receives two cats and you will receive two flower beds, one with the light side showing and one with the dark side showing. And here's the setup of the game. I have just placed one player board for explanation of the rules. And in the game you, each player will get a turn, and in each turn there are four phases. There is the refilling phase, the planting phase, the scoring phase, and the gardener phase. In the refilling phase, the active player will look at where the gardener is, and look at the row he's standing in front. If there is three or four empty spaces, then he would fill up with new flower tiles. After the refilling phase, then comes the planting phase. In the planting phase, the active player will choose one tile to plant in one of his flower beds. You can choose one of the four tiles here in front of the gardener, in the row where the gardener stands, or you can take a flower pot from the wheelbarrow and use this one instead. And this one would be worth one point. Let's say the active player took this tile you really want to get tiles that would fill up a lot of spaces. When you are placing your flower tile, you can choose which flower bed you want to place it on. You can turn it any way you want. I could place it here. I cannot place it over the edges of the square. I can place them upon these symbols, the flower pots, but each flower pot is worth one point, so if I cover this flower pot up down here, it is hidden behind my flower tile, then I wouldn't receive any points for it. And also if I cover up the plant cover, then I won't receive the two points it is worth. So try to avoid to cover up the flower pots and the plant covers. You will be filling in a lot of flower tiles to your flower beds. And if I wanted to place this one, then I couldn't place it here. You cannot place a tile upon another tile that has been placed in your flower beds, that being a flower tile, a flower pot or a cat. You can always use a cat to fill up 
an empty space. You can also discard a cat token to refill up to two empty spaces in front of the gardener. So if you can see in front of the wheelbarrow that there is a tile that you really want, then you can use a cat to refill them if there are up to two empty spaces in front of the gardener. When you take a tile from the board, then you can place this parasol on its spot and then you can see if I really wanted this tile or not. And if I didn't want it, then you can remember where you put your tile and you'll just put it back where the parasol was. So this parasol is a helper to remind you of where you took a tile from. After the planting phase where you have selected either a tile from the row where the gardener is or you have selected a flower pot from the wheelbarrow, then comes the scoring phase. In when all the empty spaces in a flower bed have been filled, then you will score the flower bed. Cats won't score you any points. They will just help you fill up empty spaces. And you will look at how many flower pots you have. In this case, we have two flower pots. Then we will take a orange cube and move it up two spaces. And then we will count up all the plant covers. We have one, two, three, four, five. And we will move a blue cube five spaces up the track. And here we actually cross this red line. Each time we cross this red line with a cube, we will receive a cat. When you have scored your flower bed, then the cat will be returned to the reserves. The flower pot will be turned to the wheelbarrow and all the flower tiles will be put in the, at the end of the flower queue. And you will just put them randomly at the end of the queue. Then you will turn your flower bed to the other side and you will switch it with the flower bed from the general supply. The cat you just received, you can actually use it. And in this way you could be able to score two flower beds at a turn. So in this case we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flower pots. I can choose to move a orange cube that I already have on the scoring track, or I can st start a new cube. In this case, I would actually choose a new cube and move it seven spaces forward, and I would cross the red line, so I would receive a cat as a bonus. Then I would move the blue cube two spaces. I can choose to move this blue up two spaces, or I can start a new one. I can never divide my moves. So I couldn't move this one one and then take another blue and move it one space. I can only move one cube, one orange cube and one blue cube when I'm scoring a flower bed. I cannot divide my moves to more than one cube of a color. Later on when I score more points, if I had to move the blue, for example, four spaces and I chose this one, one, two, three, then I have wasted one move, but I got my blue cube to the target area. So I might choose to move him, even though I would lose some movement. The first player to get a cube to the target area will receive a bonus token. And we have a bonus token with two beehives on it. So the first player to enter the target area will receive this token as a bonus. It is worth two points. The next player to enter the target area will receive a token with one beehive upon it and it will be worth one point at the end of the game. The same player cannot receive both tokens. When the third cube of a color is placed on the scoring track, then I will receive a bonus tile, I will receive a flower pot. And I would have to place this flower pot on one of my flower beds. I cannot place it in my reserves. I will have to use it immediately when I receive it. So remember, each time a cube crosses this line, you will receive a cat token as a bonus. And you can actually use the cat token immediately if you want to. And when your third cube comes into play, then you will receive a flower pot as a bonus. 
You are only allowed to have two cats in your reserve, so if a cube crosses the red line and you receive a third cat, then you would have to place the cat on one of your flower beds. After the scoring phase comes the gardener phase, and here we will move the gardener one space to the left. And then it would be the next player's turn. And when the gardener, he will be moving around and the players will take their turn. And when he gets to this space, the starting space again, then he will increase his value by one. And you will keep on playing, taking tiles, scoring your flower beds, and he will increase his value to four, and then to five, and then to six. And when you reach six, you go into the final round. If I have two or less flower tiles on one flower bed, then that flower bed will be discarded. And now at the start of my turn, each turn in the final round, I, I will start by losing two points. And I can lose two points by either moving the blue cube one back, or I can move a orange cube two spaces back. If I cross the red line when I move back, I do not receive a cat as a bonus. But if I later on when I score my flower bed, Comes, come across the red line again, then I would score a cat as a bonus. In the game, you will really try not to move back these cubes up here at the target area where they are worth 20 points. Because if you move one of them back, you would actually lose five points. And for the blue one, you would lose six points. So in the game, you're trying to get as many cubes as you can up in this area. In the final round of the game, all players will proceed playing until they have scored their last flower bed. And remember, each time you start your turn, you actually lose two points. So you want to finish them as quick as you can, so you won't lose too many points in doing so. When every player has finished their last flower bed and they have scored it, then we will count up the points for each player. And remember to count the beehives as well. And the player with the most points is the winner of the game. I will set the game up for two players and then play a few rounds so you can get a better feeling of how the game is played. Now I have set up the game for two players and I will start playing. And first we'll, we'll see if we have anything to refill and we don't. It's the first round of the game so everything is filled. So I will go to the next phase and take a tile and I will place it on my board. Maybe he will place it here and we will move the gardener. We have nothing to score yet. The next player might take this one and place it here. And the next player, he will go for this big tile here so we can cover up a lot of spaces and see if it can fit. We can put it here. All right. I think he will put it right there. And we go on to the next row at the next player. Can he place this one? Remember you can always swap the tiles around. You can place it here and in this row I could actually use a cat to fill up these two spaces if I really wanted one of these two tiles. I don't think I will do it yet. I think I will take this one and place it here and then we go over here and I think he will he will actually take this tile. This tile is worth two points because it has a plant cover on it and I can place it right here in the corner like this. And the next player in the game you can kind of try to look ahead. Um, you know you you will get every second row there you will have a choice between the flower tiles and you can also look at what is coming up next in front of the wheelbarrow. 
Now this, mm, yes, this one would fit up here. I think he will discard a cat and get into new tiles and we'll take this big tile here so we can fill this square over here. Boop, boop, boop. I think maybe he could use this one. No. Oh, he would have to fill up one space, one flower pot in placing this one. He might not want to do that. You know what? He's just going to take this one. And then it's the next player's turn. And now we have three empty spaces. Oh, I forgot to move the wheelbarrow. So we will fill up the empty spaces like this and move the wheelbarrow like this. And now we have more. Oh, do you know what? Oh, this one would actually feel pretty good over here. Like this. And we would move this one on. I think he wants to take a flower pot and put it inside here. And then he can take one of his cats. And now he has filled out every empty space on this flower bed. So he will score this one. And then we would count up each flower pot. And we have one, two, three, four, five flower pots. So we'll move a orange cube five. And we have two plant covers. So we will move the blue one two spaces. And these will go to the reserve. And they will go in the queue like this. Then I will turn this one onto the the other side and swap it with the tile, the general tile, and now I have a new flower bit to fill out. And then it would be the next player's turn. Actually, he's going to do exactly the same. He's going to take a flower pot and he will use his cat here. And he has one, two, three, four, five orange. And he has three plant covers like this one two three and he will turn this around and get a new one like this and then it's the next player's turn and he will take he will take this one put it in here <laughs> and he can take this one up here. And what does he want? One with a lot of spaces on, like this. Can he use this one? Oops, let's put this one here. Yep, actually he can use it right there. And now we have come to the start, to the seal area. We will increase the value of the gardener by one. And this one, ah, it would be perfect over here. And I think think what about oh this one is perfect right here and I didn't have a cat if I had a cat I could have filled the last empty space and scored the flower the flower bit but have to I have to uh, wait until my next turn he can take this one and he can use his cat here to fill the last empty space and then score it and he has one orange and one, two, three, four of the blue plant colors. One, two, three, four. And he passed a red line, so he'll get a cat. What? I 
I think I have to stack them over here like this. Now we will fill a lot of new flower tiles onto the row, move the wheelbarrow, and now we have space for the last flower tiles, like this. And I think, ooh, nice one. That was one I just could use right here. And now he can score his flower bed, and he has two orange, one, two, he will receive a cat. And he, oh, I am moving the wrong one, one, two. <laughs> Alrighty then, one, two, and he will receive a cat for crossing the red line. And then he will move four spaces with a blue. He could choose a new one, but I think he will take this one. One, two, three, four. And then he would receive a cat from the reserves, like right there. And we will swap this one, like this. And the game continues like this, until we have reached up to six, and then we will go into the final round, and the person with, and the player with the most points will win the game. And that is how Cottage Garden is played. A game for the whole family, or just as a filler with your gaming group, it's a game that you can play with your, actually you can play in a solo mode, so you can play with yourself like a puzzle. And in the solo mode, you are trying to get as many points as you can. So there isn't really any special rules other than you are trying to beat your own score in the game. A game where you are concentrating on your own flower bits and trying to fill the empty spaces most optimally as you can and you are not so much watching what the other players are doing in the game and there are not a lot of player interaction. Actually, there isn't really any kind of player interaction. You are all just concentrating on your own board. So in that way, I would say it's a bit of a typical Euro game um, where you are concentrating on your own strategy and concentrating on filling your own things. Of course, in some games you can do something so you can maybe prevent the other players from doing something. In this game, you can actually snatch a tile that you can see, oh, that player, he could actually really use this tile. I think I'll take this one instead of another tile that might have been more optimal for me. But in, that's the only thing you can do in the game that has anything to do with the other players. Um, and I, the components of the game, I really like the components. I think the flower tiles, they are cute, and this little wheelbarrow, I really think it's its a clever design. It actually comes in two pieces, so you just have to uh, flip off the sides, and then it's assembled, and just, just put this wheel on it. I think it's, it's a cool little wheelbarrow. I think the quality of the game, it's good. I can't come, and no complaints there. The only thing is, I actually have a, an uh, um, isn't release of the game and they have uh, the board on both sides with a four player so they actually gave us some stickers we, could, we had to cut out and then we could put the stickers on the board here on the side of the board but it's no problem it wasn't any problem cutting them out and putting them on the board but uh, I, I will assume that when you order the games from now on, afterwards, they will have corrected the error. But uh, I actually think it's a good, neat, quick little game, but there isn't any deep strategy in it. So if you like a puzzling game, then it might be that this game would also be something for you guys. Cottage Garden. I actually enjoy playing this game as a quick filler. <laughs>